This is ABTV, Animal Bites Television. For animal lovers, by animal lovers. So what do we have here? This is a bumblebee vanilla cream. So we have a fire, a vanilla, a spider, a pastel, orange dream, and looks like yellow belly. So you start getting <laughs> this, a lot of jeans in that one. And this thing is outrageous. What do we have here? All right, that's a coral glow, and she bling yellow belly, fader pastel. So you guys are getting an idea that this show is going to be really cool and loads of cool ball pythons. My name is Brian Barchek. I'm no zoologist, just a guy with a passion for animals. And that passion often takes me on animal adventures around the world. This week, I'll be in New Hampshire at New England Reptile Distributors. You're watching Snake Bites. The average person probably wouldn't travel all the way to New Hampshire in the face of a historic blizzard that's about to drop almost 30 inches of snow. But I'm not an average guy, and when given the opportunity to visit Kevin McCurley of New England Reptile Distributors, I jumped at it regardless of a little snow. Kevin has been a pioneer of ball python genetics for almost 20 years and is responsible for hundreds of paint jobs now available in the reptile trade. His passion and knowledge is second to none. I can't wait to see what he has to show us. This is pretty cool because I, I tried making this for a while. This is a, so imagine like a soul sucker, right. which is an episodic is relationship between lesser, lesser and, and, and hidden gene one with bam. And then you layer on pastel, uh, leopard, yellow belly, and like granite or whatever. So you get this oh, kind of soul God. sucker. Yeah, but it um, has all that kind of leopardy look to it. Yeah, but it's in, so it's inferno. It depends how you want to look. With right. it. Yeah, but it's, uh, it's really, Interesting. Now the lesser pieds are white, right? Yeah, those are so, uh, demon eyes, I call them. Yeah, because they have the small eyes. So. <laughs> I have some of those. So, yeah, they so, eat great, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay, this is awesome. What else yeah, we got? Cool. Um, we can. I came real late on the Orange Dream stuff, so okay. I've been working a little, a little hard on that. So I spent some good money with Ozzy to, to get my founding stock. This would be, uh, so that's a spider, spider, fire, Orange Dream, yellow belly, and cheat. Let's and double cheat. check, yes. And I mean, it seems like, to me anyways, I, you know, tell me what you think. I mean, the Orange Dream stuff really reacts with spiders well. I mean, it, it, you know, what else? What critical. Other I did I did some Hidden Gene Woma stuff, just just started it, and it, it does some weird things. I mean, I've even done um, with Soul Sucker, and it doesn't really do anything really great, but you, you have the limited patterning, mm -hmm. which of the spider is, is critical right. for the Orange Dream, and now we're just like, I think what we're, we're imagining is getting rid of all this noise, getting minimal pattern, you know, right. make things that, let's say, uh, let's say we have, here's a magpie. Right. Okay, so we're trying to, like, minimalize things. It actually, it's kind of, this is a little dirty. And so you're, you're saying the magpie, you're, you're trying to get more Orange Dream into this, or that's part I, I, well, of the Orange I need dream. to get Orange Dream into that. Here's, into that. Here's some, uh, some Orange Dream. Okay, so this is obviously, is this a super enchi? Uh, it looks like it might have I don't know what it was. Okay, uh, this would pretty much be, uh, at the very least, this is a uh, spider, orange dream, fire, enchi, yellow belly. So just normal enchi, not super enchi. With no, all that reduced no, pattern. There's no, huh? there's no super enchi at all. Wow. I'm just starting to get the enchi into it. And right. uh, no, so definitely Wow, that's not. amazing. I mean, just look at how clean that thing looks. All right, this one, this one just has some dry shed on it. So I was just soaking that. But, right. Uh, look, you know. You so this one, like this one, this is adding pinstripe into yeah, it. Yeah. Now we start adding pinstripe. So we have, yeah. So I'm hatching stuff, and I kind of put it in a rack, and we just start feeding it, and then you know you kind of kind of come back to it. Right. Like this. These are two different animals, or the yeah, same? Yeah. No, different. So okay. This yeah, because the head is totally blown out on this one. Yeah. So this one is. Uh, this is actually from a super enchi bumblebee pin. It's fun to see Kevin even struggle remembering what morphs are in all these guys. It's pretty rough to keep track with all these genes involved. We don't want to, yeah, we, <laughs> we didn't do. What's interesting, uh, I'll tell you guys, like sometimes people uh, ask me, like if you breed a spider to spider, you produce, in theory, super spiders, but right. I can't tell them. Right. But uh, it's not like lethal or anything like that. But what I started noticing, if okay, I start wait, taking. Let, let me back up for a second here. So what you're saying there is a super spider. Uh, in theory, there should be a super spider, but I have attention deficit disorder, so I never follow through on my projects. But when you're breeding two dominants together, in theory, you should have, you know, homozygous right. spider. Right. It looks visually the same as the other ones, but if I were to breed it to normals, all, would be all spiders. these spiders. I think 
something yeah. like that, a pinstripe? Have yeah, we had that? a pinstripe once that, that we actually bred pin to pin. We raised the pin up, we bred it, and all of the babies for the first two years came out pinstripe. Why do you think the spiders seem to be, I mean, they're obviously, when you bring them to champagne, they're lethal. I mean, is there something specific? Yeah, we have a nerve, so at, at that locus point, so the locus point is like the address where all these different morphs reside, and you know, they're allelic. So at this locus point, I, I think the spider thing is like a nerve. Right. Uh, damaged you know, nerve, so it's, it's just like you know, right. uh, caramel has kinking and stuff yeah. like that. You ha you have the the sable, the champagne, the hidden gene woma, the spider, all that stuff at that like same kind of locus site. When you bring them together, they're pretty much failures. The problem is, is we have a lot of different genes to work with. If we were working for you know ten different genes, we'd right. really work them to death. Right. But then all of a sudden we start making these things, and we we run off on tangents. What what's yeah. important to us? Today, two years from right now, you know, isn't necessarily going right. to be where my direction right. is. I go off like Orange Dream wasn't a big deal, but now I'm going, you know, really going on this Orange Dream thing. Where I'm going to make this minimalistic, very, very clean, yeah, something on this line, orangey, yeah. patternless snake. Right. And you know, you can even do a the little, little yeah, a little bit less than that. Yeah, and it's got that totally blown out head pattern. You can kind of see the difference between these two heads. You know, one's at least got the pattern, and one completely doesn't. And, and these are all just orange dream combos as well. So, wow, that's... Another project, I want to make as much noise as I possibly can. So you're going the opposite way. Yeah, you want to be... go to speckling. Uh, right. Leopard, leopard is really good yeah. with that. I mean, like, even if you went back to, you know, this guy with just Yeah, it's just really that, busy, yep. That noise. Uh, you can get things where we obliterate everything. Um, like, a, with a, this is like a super fader mm -hmm. combo. So that's right. a... Inferno, or Super Inferno, Super Fader, uh, Lucifer. Then you can do... <laughs> you gotta love these dark names that Kevin comes up with. I mean, Lucifer, Inferno, this guy lives in the pit to hell. Quite literally. <laughs> but, uh, you know, obviously this is this is now a very noisy, obliterated expression, right. which is a completely just different thing to me. Uh, so sometimes we're making them really, really super clean. Uh, sometimes we wanna do... Like, I like how clean that is. Yeah, it's super clean. You know, yeah. and you're gonna start yep. seeing that on there. Exactly. But it's, there's just so many things to work with. And then, I, you know, like, when I was doing the Odium thing, I didn't even know what I really had. I just made right. a couple weird snakes, and sometimes stuff just sneaks up on you. Yeah. And then you just do the right thing. Um, hope people realize that this thing called epistasis. Epistasis right. is uh, some of the reactions that you and I love right. the most when we're breeding, you know, Hidden yeah. gene woman to lesser, you have this ridiculous thing. If we have a super stripe, that's a yellow belly to, to Spectre. To Spectre right. You know, same thing with the highways yeah, and, the, exactly. and, all, and all that kind of stuff. And yellow belly is is very reactive right. to some of these different genes. You know, same thing with like Puma. But we're starting to like. So you think the odium might be that same type of? It, it is thing. definitely it's reactive, and it really means like when I start layering like pastel on it and stuff mm -hmm. like that, I don't really have it fully defined yet. Um, like this is like my first year really kind of getting into it. Right. But you know, it, it's just So the odium is a, is a new gene. Let's go take a look at a few of those. Okay. All right, all right cool. So the odium is basically another gene that you've been kind of working with for the last little while. I mean, you kind of founded it, right? How long has it been in your collection? Uh, well, <laughs> it's been in my collection for a while. Uh, a couple years ago, I made a, a few snakes. I bred the odium female to like a hidden gene woman, Enchi and pastel and I made a couple snakes out of that and then I just um, I have like a, here's a hidden gene woman and she here's a hidden gene woman and she pastel they're pretty and I just use those you know to make like I wanted to make you know soul sucker type mm -hmm. stuff so I bred those snakes and one of those snakes did something crazy and yeah, it, like right. and it made these two weird snakes all right so this is the That's animal that, call that double beast a double, <laughs> double beast and uh, this was one of the animals that you produced that you said, wow, this I've got to work this. Thing. Yeah, so okay. that, that animal, there's two different variations of that. What, what's really interesting about the odiums, it's not like, I breed a spider to pass on and make a bumblebee. And right. pretty much all bumblebees are similar to each other. Right. These don't work that way. It's really polymorphic then. Yeah, this, so this, in, in theory, this is a Mojave, it's a hidden gene woma, and it's Enchi, and it's an odium. Okay. And I have another one, it's, looks it's brother. It looks different, but when they breed, they make pretty much the same babies. They're, really? It's really, it's really weird. So that was my weird looking snake. And I was like, okay, we have beast and we have double beast because I'm like, what are these snakes? 
Right. I'm like, I don't know. So we, we bred them right. this past year and we started making this really weird stuff. So I made like the smattering of stuff, but what was really interesting when I bred that to pastel. Really? As soon as I started doing pastel, Changes it, it the started freaking out. Okay. So you can take that snake and then you can make like, I'm not even gonna bother telling what everything is because it's not worth it. Right. Because it's, it's like a, I'm just gonna, a, a I'm menagerie of stuff. Gonna be wrong. Holy cow, look at that thing. Whoo! That thing is smoking out. You can definitely see the hidden gene coming out in this one. That, that yeah. white up in the sides. I know there's hidden gene in that for sure. Wow, that's amazing. That's, that's, that's pinstripe even. So it's like Jeez. with pinstripe and I wow, guess pastel. Guys. And maybe maybe pastel, I'm not sure. We can just kind of like take you right through a bunch of that. Let me I'll extract that yeah, and yeah, we'll play with it. those two. Yeah. Again, guys, you can kind of see just the, the unbelievable cleanness of this Odium gene. And then, again, that really cool white that comes up the sides. Uh, that's that hidden gene Woma coming out. And it's, it's really cool just to see new projects starting to develop. And, and uh, Kevin's been doing it a long time, that's for sure. So what's it's, next? Um, here's like when we take a pastel Mojave Odium. Right. You right. see all that, that. Yeah, so you have like, yeah, the odium changes like just kind of the overall look of it. I mean, tons of blushing on it. Um, the sides kind of get, it's, it's a crazy change. And, and now the odiums, you said, I, as a whole, they don't look that different. They look, they, ready? I'm, yeah. This is such a, this is, it's one of those things that I think the way this thing is work is this epistasis. It's, right. it's reactive to other right. genes. By itself, it is terrible. It is right, nothing. Yeah. So we have. See that little side thing? Right, yeah, just a little I wonder, bit. I'm not gonna show the belly, but I'm right. gonna show like the side thing. Right. But that was what keyed you off to like, that, okay, yeah, there might be And it was from a there. wild caught animal. Oh, there's absolutely no doubt about it that it changes things. It like starts to, you get these ones where you have like, wow, that is really cool. So you can see the Mojave, but you yep. see like you get, you get like green. And again, it's really interesting when you start like playing with these genes like this. That, I mean, look at that, I mean, that's just so cool. Yeah, it's it's almost like a tri-colored animal where it's like halfway down, it just changes completely. Okay, so judging by the uh, the tag here, this is a snake. I have no idea exactly what it is, but this is obviously, it looks like it's a pastel, lesser odium, but I have no idea what else is in it, but it's a really beautiful snake. And again, that odium gene just really messes with its size. It's certainly got Enchi in it, there's no doubt about that. Right. So now, I was just talking about, this is a pastel lesser odium Enchi, anything else in there? Um, that's probably what it is. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, that was a good guess. Yeah, it was a very good guess. Yeah. It was actually excellent. <laughs> yeah, hey, excellent. even a blind squirrel finds a nut every now and then. Do you like, ever think you can get a purple snake? I mean, like an all-purple snake? Well, you I mean, can get like ones that look, I mean, when you start getting this is like bright, bluey kind of. Now, so what's this? This is? That is whatever you want to call it, because that's got a lot. That's like hidden gene woma, leopard, super pastel, <sighs> whatever. <laughs> So it's a, it's a hodgepodge. Well, isn't that interesting a little bit? Like, I noticed that once you get past about five genes, it, it almost becomes impossible. To know. Well, this one I didn't really, like, when we when we hatched this, I just, like, I was like, oh, that's cool. Some of the ones I'll be really intent on the genes, but like I said, lately I've been really, I'm just starting to breed ball pythons. I've looked at way too many baby ball pythons. I mean, literally my first pairing was today. But and this year, like and I'm going to be far more selective. This year we're going to produce less babies. I want to be very, very specific on what I want to make right. um, and just kind of continue what right. inspires me. Now this is one clean snake. What, what exactly is this? Uh, this is a super pastel pinstripe desert ghost. And this is Nerd's line of desert ghosts. This okay, is so not, it's separate. You know, yeah, have you bred it? Is it compatible or you don't know yet? Um, I, I really don't know. Uh, okay, gotcha. Like and the, again, the Desert Ghost is, is a recessive mutation. Yes. So we're here in one of the ball python breeding rooms, and you were talking about your Desert Ghost earlier. This is the original wild-caught female, right? And she's going to get you. Oh, she's going to light me up. That's ah, she's funny. a good girl. So that's, that's super defensive. Beautiful animal. So so this is your own line. You brought this yes. out of West that's Africa. That's out of the wild. And it's a recessive mutation. Yep. You're talking about it. So, so it's obviously the breeding season. This is obviously a big girl here. Um, take me through the process of where we're at. You're just starting to breed stuff. You're starting to get some copulation. Literally, stuff. I'm starting to breed as in today is okay. our first copulation. So I just, I, I literally did a pairing of like five snakes because I selectively want to make 
that really special snake. Um, so I have to think twice a lot about my genes and my, you know, what I want to do. Right. Yeah. So what do we got? Okay. So we have uh, Super NC Pastel Lucifer Yellow oh, Belly, breeding man. a lemon pastel. That's a very old pastel. Yeah, that looks like some of your, you know, like it, original lines. I mean, stuff. I have some that are super pretty. That one's maybe not, but it, it genetically has what it needs to have. And uh, but we're just starting the breeding right now. We're starting to uh, get snakes with follicles. Come through with the ultrasound. Um, Where are you at right now? Like 10 millimeters? <coughs> 10, last time? like yeah. 18s would be big right now. Yeah, right, yeah. Now I was gonna ask you, because I've always been a big advocate of like copulation causing follicle growth. Where do you live? Absolutely, I think basically uh, expanding the cloaca of the snake, all these different things, you know, the courting process and so on. You watch the snakes breeding for days. You, right. you know it has to have an effect on them as far as hormones and stuff yeah. like that. And we all wanna, you know, release luteinizing hormones, we wanna cause right follicular growth and ultimately uh, ovulations. But there's you know there's always little tricks that we all do. Just cooling them down, you know, yeah. going through the whole process yeah. just like you do, yeah. the whole thing, you know, you know, making sure they're well fed, uh, and not overworking some of my males because I have seen in the past where I take a male and I'm like, God, I really if I really bred this thing a lot of things. I don't know if you ever had it, but I've taken that male and I started breeding maybe too many females and all of a sudden I got like a lot of duds. Uh, another trick don't go into your breeding season with your females colossal. Right, yeah. Be so yeah. you know yeah, you the feeding feed trigger. and the, the yeah, follicle yeah, growth. Trigger. Yeah, Because exactly. do you remember the days where you and I would have our, make this female like oh, yeah. 3,500 10 grand, pound yeah, female, exactly, yeah. massive, and we're like, that female never goes. Yeah. Well, it never goes because we're not triggering the, the whole yeah. process, but having follicles, having decent weight, which is healthy weight, because if right. it's too skinny, they generally won't even get follicles, or at least right. they won't ovulate. And then we start feeding the animal, and then that springs right. on the follicular growth. Yeah, there's usually the several triggers. I always talk about it. Sometimes coolness, copulation, feeding. These are triggers that kind of get females to start going. And if you do it right, you can actually get a female that may not produce and, and get her to produce if you do everything the right way. I look at them. I'm fascinated by the the you know the snake itself, and then I look at the palate scheme right. and what we can do to modify yeah. you know genetics and, and refine and right. breed and stuff like that but understanding the animals is, is really critical right. and uh in the end me and kevin could have spent all day just talking and reminiscing about ball python morphs but after all this isn't an hour show so we're gonna have to leave it with this it's so amazing to walk around and just pull open drawer after drawer of animals and each one of them is just more breathtaking than the last. And I had such an incredible time getting to know what Kevin's philosophy was behind things. I hope you guys have enjoyed it as much as I have. So there it is. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. What a bunch of amazing ball pythons here at Kevin's Place. You can follow more of his stuff over on Facebook at New England Reptile Distributors. And as always, I was Facebooking and tweeting my way through it. So you can follow me over at Snake Bites TV. Until next week, you've been watching Snake Bites. Hi, I'm Peter Birch, an Aussie bloke who loves wildlife. My respect for nature started when I was a young boy in rural New South Wales. Since then, it's exploded into an obsession. New episodes only on Animal Bites TV.